I'd love to read a book and be absorbed in words to escape. Hello everybody. So I'm going to try and lay out my plans regarding Renee reads by theme or by genre, whatever kind of term you'd like to use. These are plans I'm instigating this year that hopefully I'll be able to see through, at least to a certain extent, and it's to try and just help me break out of perpetual reading funks, and I thought that maybe if I piled some stuff together and tried to read in little groups, um, and actually set myself just some goals, then it may be enough pressure to actually get the ball rolling and ha make stuff happen. I mean, I'm not holding out too much hope because I know me and I know what I'm like and that I usually don't see this stuff through but with luck uh, maybe some more books will be read this year than, than were read last year so we'll see how we go. So here are the piles. I should state that you'll probably think the piles are ridiculously big uh, especially if you're used to me and my <laughs> my lack of seeing stuff through but I figured I may as well aim high and then at least if I can get half of each pile read um, that would be an achievement so I'd be more than happy with that. I've designated some months in my head for each each pile, each grouping. I'm trying to spread them out a little bit because it's going to be, if I'm successful, it's going to be so much back-to-back -back reading and I'm just not used to that. It's been years since I've been in the habit of, of reading at that rate. So it would throw me out a little bit. I'd probably need a little gap in between each one. So my first aim is March. I would like March to be the month in which I read my witch books, or at least some of them. The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have read half of this, but then I put it down back in November, and I've got to pick it up and just start again. But thankfully, it was I was getting through it quite quickly at the time I was reading it, so hopefully that shouldn't take very long. So, Diviners. Hollow Pike by James Dawson. I've heard that this is quite interesting, and it was a review copy, so it'd be good to try and get it read at some point. Once a Witch by Carolyn McCullough. I got this ages ago, um, I think maybe last Christmas, not the Christmas that's just been, but the Christmas before that possibly, um, yeah, and I know that I need to read it, so. Burn Mark by Laura Powell, again, this is a review copy, so I should have read it ages ago, but, you know, that's how we roll. It's ancient witchcraft and modern world, so. Witchstruck, another review copy, this is by Victoria Lamb, and this is, um, Victorian era witchcraft stuff, so, yeah, should be fun. Blood ba Magic by Tessa Grattan. This is an um, advanced proof copy from ages ago. Obviously this book has been out for some time now. I should have read it long ago. I would like to just say that I've read this damn thing. So yeah, Blood Magic. Chime by Franny Billingsley. This was also a review copy. This one just seems interesting though. I've heard so many people say that they find the narrative style really unique and that it either, you either love it or hate it really, but I'm always interested in different narrative styles. So yeah. So finally, it doesn't matter if I don't read these right away, but A Matter of Magic is a combination of two stories by Patricia, Patricia C. Reed, and I just like the look of it because A, this girl looks a bit like Felicity Jones, and B, I enjoy my Victorian Regency era, which stuff, probably why I like the Gemma Doyle series so much, so, yeah. That, but there's no, there's no ticking clock on this one at all, so that's just if I fit it in, which I'm sure I won't. So those were my witch books, hopefully going to read them in March. Next up, there's dystopian and sci-fi. I've got a few, quite a few of these I should get through too. Now, I think my dystopian sci-fi month, I might make that June. Perhaps June seems right. We've got Mammon by J.B. Thomas. This was a review copy. The Forsaken, another review copy by Lisa M. Staus. The Unraveling, again, another review copy by Elizabeth Norris. The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan, which I've had for ages and is not a review copy, and I've got the all of the series. Um, but I do want to at least read this first one, because I do own the other two, and I've always been somewhat interested in it, even though I'm not a zombie fan at all, and I find zombie stories quite depressing. But, um... Yeah, I've just, I've been meaning to read it for so long. So. Inside Out by Maria V. Snyder. I also have Outside In, but I like, um, I was a big fan of Poison Study, and so I, yeah, just want to read this one. Insurgent by Veronica Roth. Yes, I'm one of those weirdos who has not read the sequel yet, because Divergent was okay, but I didn't rave on about it like everybody else did, so I wasn't nearly as keen to, like, I wasn't as eager to pick this up and get through it, so 
It's still just sitting here, and I'll read it at some point. And The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, because I've heard nothing but praise for this book and this series, and certainly want to get into it, and it's certainly one I know has a really interesting narrative style, so, yeah. Look who's saying hello. Ollie says hi. He's, um, come in to yell at me, but he's just going to sit down while they mix the video, aren't you? Yeah. So he's being, he's being quite good. But he says, hi! Hello! Hello, viewers! I am cute. But yeah. Say hello, Arnie Leslie. Hi, Arnie Leslie! I love you! Okay, if I do read anything in May, um, perhaps I could do some realistic fiction, some realistic contemporary fiction, because I've got a big pile of, of those books that I've not touched on. First one, the most shameful one in a way, is my very battered second-hand copy of On the Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. That's right, On the Jellico Road, Aussie title came first. Um, this book's been out for years here. Seven years or something ridiculous. A long time here in Australia, and I've got to catch up because <laughs> I've still not read it, and yet it seems like half of America has. So, and uh, again, it's uh, certainly one I've heard nothing but praise about. So, I promised Misty, uh, Misty the book out, that I would read this. So, really need to get on that. Another one that probably everyone will think is very shameful is um, Looking for Alaska by John Green. I've not read it, and I've had it for a while. It's the tiny, tiny mass market paperback one, but I don't mind what it looks like. I've just really got to read this, so. I've got A Pocket Full of Eyes by Lily Wilkinson. It's one I've had of hers for a while now. I really enjoyed the other two Lily Wilkinson books that I've read, so I hope that, you know, this will also be an enjoyable experience. Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac by Gabrielle Zevin, and as you know, I really liked Gabrielle Zevin's Birthright series so far. I really enjoyed her writing, so I think that I'll probably enjoy this too. The perks of being a wallflower, just because I think hopefully I might be able to get through it quite quickly, and I've seen the film now and I know that it has been such a hyped and beloved book for some time. Um, yeah, so should just get that one read. Hold Still by Nina LaCour. I've had this for a while and I remember, I like a few years actually, and I purchased it because of its content actually, because it, it deals with, with suicide and losing a best friend and things, and I really should have read it by now but I think I keep putting it off because I don't want to be depressed, even though I got it to kind of have it be a cathartic read. So, yeah, got to read that. Finally, just for fun, I've got the High Society books. I've got High Society and Uncommon Criminals by Ali Carter, and I've not read them, and everyone says they're so much fun. So, yeah, really should read these. For the month of either July or September, I don't know which one I'll aim for, I thought I could do a few of my um, period piece reads. I've got Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. I've had this for some time, and I believe it was a review copy, if I recall. And yeah, had it for a while. I'm really glad I got this cover as well, because I love old-fashioned keys, and that's just so pretty. But I do need to read it. Willful in propriety, and it's a collection of short stories, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Timeless by ah, Alexandra Monnier, and this is like half and half, I believe. Half modern, half period, I, I think. But yeah. I got this one when I was overseas, in fact. Whisper My Name by Jane England, because I read Jane England's um, Wild Thorn Hall, and it was quite enjoyable. So this one features seances and, and, and such goings on, so that'll be good. This one also features seances, I believe. Yes, it does. This is Velvet by Mary Hooper, and I've got another one of her books back here somewhere. Yep. Fallen Grace, I've also got that one. So I thought if I read if I read these two back to back that might be fun. The Apothecary's Daughter by Charlotte Betts. I got this mainly because the cover looked cool and it had a lot of praise on the back. There's also a new one out. Don't ask me what it is. It's like The Painter's Apprentice or something, I believe. This just sounds nifty, really. And finally, The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. I've not actually read any of Maureen Johnson's books, so I'm a tad ashamed about that. And yeah, I've heard this is enjoyable. I kind of know some spoilers though. I read too much on Goodreads reviews, but that's okay, I'm sure I'll still have fun. So, Then finally I thought maybe scattered throughout the year, I don't know if I'll 
maybe set a month aside specifically for these ones. It just depends. I need to get through more of my paranormal YA stuff. I'd like to read by these ten bones because it's fairly short and the you know, text is quite large, so this may not take too long to read. I know Lara really enjoyed it. The Gathering Light by Leah Bardugo, and this is also known as Shadow and Bone. Um, Misty said that this was a decent enough read, and um, yeah, I'd just like I'd like to delve into it at some point. Smolder and the Replacement by Brenna Yovanoff. This is also is it the space between? That's the American title. Yeah. Any hoozles. I know that a lot of people have really praised Brenna Yovanoff's writing, and so I like to get through these ones. The Book of Blood and Shadow by Robin Wasserman. I read part of this and it was okay. It started to lose its plot. I got it like, yeah, I got halfway through and it started to just get a tad confuzzled there, but it's meant to sort of have a Da Vinci Code feel to it and it did to a certain extent, but that was getting the evil month of November when I just put everything aside, so try and pick it back up again. Days of Blood and Starlight. I'm going to try and read this one soon, like in the next month or so because I was actually quite keen to get into it. It's by Lonnie Taylor, and as you know, I had really mixed feelings on Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I loved and hated it, so I'm keen to see how I respond to this one. Elizabeth George, The Edge of Nowhere. I was meant to do a review on this ages ago, but I didn't read it. I tried. I started it, and then I didn't finish because I was hopeless, so... It'd be nice if I actually read and reviewed the damn thing, so... Unearthly by Cynthia Hand, because I know the, fir the third and final book in this trilogy is coming out really soon. And I've got this, and I've got Hallowed, so probably should read them. And then finally, it's probably the most hilarious one in this pile, Bleeding Violet by Tia Reeves. I've also got Slice of Cherry, but Bleeding Violet takes the cake, because I think it's been on my bookshelves now for five years. Could just be four years, but it's a while. It's been here for a while, and it really needs to get read. I could have added a pile of fairy tale retellings that I should try and get through as well, but I sort of don't know if I want to designate a month for those necessarily. I've just sprinkled them here, there, and everywhere if I can, because there are still plenty that I've got to to get through that I already own, and of course there's always more that I want to purchase. Um, I mean, it's the same with any of these genres, but I do worry that perhaps um, bunching it all together might make, I don't know, the more grading <laughs> aspects of some of these particular genres um, uh, wear me down, but I can't really see any other way to get myself reading more and to get more books read so that I can point to stuff on my shelves and not feel quite so guilty. Like, my pile of To Be Read Shame is just ridiculous, and I easily own far more books that I haven't read than books I have read, and that's just not how it should be in my mind. I'm just trying to think of a way I can rectify that a little bit this year, so my plan might seem crazy, it might seem doomed from the outset. Uh, do let me know what you think, if you think it's going to work or just fail on its own ass. If you have any tips as to how I can go about it better, please do share. Um, I'll need your moral support certainly throughout the year if I'm going to actually get any of this done at all, but yeah, I'm t I just want this year to be a better reading year than last year was, so I'm com coming at it any way I can, and we'll just see how we go. Hopefully, there'll be some success. That's my reading plan for, for 2013. Talk to you all soon. Bye! This is what Oliver thinks of reading plans. Do you think they silly? Yeah. That's right.